Hey everybody out there, how's it going? My name is Seagizzle, and today I have a bit of a uh, different video for you. Now I know whenever I've uh, made these kind of videos in the past involving OBS and just tutorials in general, I kind of explain step by step something. Either I'm going into the settings of a software or application and I'm showing you guys how to adjust something, how to make it run better, how to you know how to change your bit rates, things kind of like that, right? Now, today's a bit different because, for one, the video title is very vague, and I know it was, but that's the whole point of this video, um, is to be somewhat vague so I can explain the vagueness. And I know the title is going to say something along the lines of uh, how to improve your stream performance or how to improve OBS performance or OBS quality and performance, something, something like that, something along the lines of getting more out of OBS. So today, in this video, I'm going to basically show you guys how to do that, how to reduce the impact OBS has on your CPU and how to also improve stream quality. And the way we're going to do that is with OBS multi-platform. And I will explain to you what that is in just a second. So what I need you guys to do before I can start explaining stuff is the first link in the description you'll see the link to the OBS website or if you want just open up a new tab in Google OBS and I will do the same thing. OBS website so now we're here right? Now if you look over to your right, you'll see Get OBS Multi-Platform. Now I'm sure most of you have been here before though because uh, I'm sure if you're here you probably have tried streaming before or downloaded OBS before and if you've probably been here you probably just went over to the left hand side here and just get the Windows version because most of you probably are probably streaming from Windows because, you know, come on. Uh, and you guys probably have ignored this side. And also this half of the uh, website is, I believe, relatively new. So if we look over here, OBS Multi-Platform. Well, what is OBS Multi-Platform? Like it says on the website right here. OBS Multi-Platform is a complete rewrite of the original OBS from the ground up, with the main goals of course being multi-platform support, a more thorough feature set, and a much more powerful API. A very early and simple release is currently available for Mac. OBS Multi-Platform will eventually support many of the advanced requested features not present in the original OBS, such as multiple stream outputs and scene previewing. It does not have these features in this release. So, as we see here, the most important part out of all I just read right there is OBS multi-platform is a complete rewrite of the original OBS. So OBS on the left hand side here where my mouse is right now, that's the original OBS, like the one you would download normally and stream from. Now a reason why a, a total rewrite is a really good thing is because OBS originally was not really that most, you know, the most amazingly coded uh, piece of software out there. Because, to be fair, it's open source. I think it was written by one guy. I don't remember all the details. I remember someone some, uh, more informed about this than I am explained this to me. And basically, he was explaining that the original guy that was working on OBS and did not expect at all for this uh, for the OBS to become the most popular streaming software and to become even a popular recording software. As a matter of fact, I'm using the old OBS to record this video, funny enough. So... Whenever you're, uh, you know, kind of playing around making a software the first time when it comes to programming, you know, it can be pretty sloppy, have lots of errors, stuff like that, and not be allocated very well. Well, since then, the OBS team has been completely rewriting OBS with the intent of not only increasing the performance, but making it available on the other platforms such as uh, OS X and Linux. And this is a good thing if um, you guys on OS X and uh, Linux are somehow coming across this and didn't know you could stream, well now you can with a multi-platform. Now this video is kind of intended for the uh, Windows users more or less because most Windows users are using the standard OBS release, right? But what I'm saying today is OBS users on Windows try out the multi-platform. The reason why is because like I said a second ago, it's a complete rewrite. It performs significantly better than the old OBS. It eats up a lot, lot less CPU. The UI is a lot um, a lot more straightforward, a lot more simplistic, easier to adjust things, and that's basically it. It just runs better and it's easier to work with. So I'll explain to you guys what to do from here. So if you uh, go to OBS multi-platform, just hit the Windows version, and if you come here and it still says no stable release, just click this. It'll take you to the link to the where to get the beta version. So if you've um, so this thing installed this first. This is just like uh, the DirectX, DirectX kind of stuff like that. If like you ever uh, like play a game like on Steam something like that, you probably have this already downloaded. But just install it just in case. Um, but if you already think you have it and you run OBS, uh, OBS multi-platform, whatever, and you uh, launch it and it gives you like a little error, and uh, you probably need this. So install that in case you have that issue. Anyways, just download the installer right here, 
run it is an executable it'll install itself and you guys know how that works I have faith that you guys can launch an executable anyways I'm gonna minimize this because I already have OBS studio downloaded and installed and by the way just so you guys are aware I know mine says OBS Studio, but when you download and the shortcut gets placed on your desktop, it's going to say OBS Multi-Platform, but it's also referred to as OBS Studio. So let me open that up. Do I have it open somewhere? There it goes. Okay. Okay, here it is. So this is OBS Multi-Platform. Now right away, you'll notice that it looks kind of a lot different. As a matter of fact, here, let me bring the old OBS over just for a second so you guys look at it. I know it's going to cause that loop thing, but right away you can see the uh, differences between the old settings. So I'm just going to drag that back over. Okay. So, down here, right? The way you add, uh, add your scenes, uh, audio, everything is just different, right? Um, and I guess I will explain to you guys the overall uh, changes of the UI before I go into more, um, into anything else. So, Instead of just right clicking and adding your scenes, you can hit the plus. You can add your scenes that way. Um, similar thing with the sources. You can uh, add sources normally by right clicking, or you can just hit this. What does this gear do? Oh, wait. I think I remember what this gear does. So if you. Okay. So if you uh, have a source here and you click the little cog, it gives you uh, the uh, properties of that source. Um, also, these arrows down here. Let's go back to this first scene. Um, the arrows now actually will change the order so instead of having to right click and uh, change the order that way very annoying what you can just click and use the arrows very convenient very very more intuitive you know very better UI also if you notice in the scene for uh, my Xbox streams all the different uh, input sources here that have audio get their own individual audio mixer here before the old OBS you probably saw there's only one input for the mic well one volume control for the mic and one volume control for the speaker so it's really hard, it was really hard back then on the old OBS to really adjust your uh, individual volumes. Here, for every different source of audio, you can control the volume. Like um, my Snowball, the microphone I'm using to record this video, I can adjust the uh, audio on it in uh, OBS Studio. The audio output capture here is just my speaker so that you can actually hear my PC. The capture card is, you know, my uh, the audio from the capture device. So if I was playing a game on my Xbox and it was up here, this would be adjust the volume to that. That's something we never had before. Um, so let's go to settings. Um, basically, this is the same. Start recording and start streaming is the same. But oh, also, there's no more preview stream. Your stream is always previewing, like right here. Like you notice, I didn't hit preview for this to come up. And then make that go away. You just right click it and you just click enable. And you want to do that whenever you're streaming to save CPU. Even though this does run better, you still want to have you know the most optimal optimal performance for your computer when you're streaming to get the best quality. So we'll just turn the preview back on for now. So click settings here. And the settings. Right away, you think, oh, it's a lot different. Oh, and by the way, this is the dark theme. This is what the uh, program actually looked like um, when you first install it, but I personally prefer the dark theme. Anyways, so if we go down the stream, it's kind of like you know the old OBS settings where you uh, pick a service, it's going to be Twitch, you pick a server which is closest to you, and you add your stream key. Output, um, everything here should be just like. Your output settings are kind of, well, like a lot of the settings from OBS, like the original OBS, like the encoding, broadcast settings, video, audio, hotkeys are kind of all spread out between these and they have different names now. So all the settings here are the same, the encoder, rescale, the bit rate, C, uh, UCBR, or UCBS and UCBR, the uh, preset, um, where is that at? Oh yeah. But this is uh, how it looks on advanced. So if we go here, this is how it looks when you first get here. But you want to change this to advanced to actually play with the real settings. As you can see, everything is still here. More or less the same, just in different locations. Audio, basically everything's still the same. Video, your base resolution, the downscale, renderer, your FPS, hotkeys. I mean, that's not really anything you guys need to worry about. So basically, if you look, um, you know, look around, everything is more or less is the same. Now look at the bottom right here. Also, this is something it does now. It also shows you its con uh, it shows you in the application itself the CPU usage, which is something we didn't have before in the old OBS. And right here, OBS because it's actually kind of previewing the stream right now. Is um, which I can did I disable? No, I didn't. Um, because I was previewing the stream, I was using it a little bit. But uh, whenever I'm streaming, it doesn't get above 30 usually on my CPU, which gives me a lot more room to 
um, be able to do other stuff with my PC, like uh, check the chats if I get without my computer computer lagging down. And also, I can because I'm using less CPU. If I go to settings, go to output, I can lower the uh, CPU usage preset lower and lower and lower to get a higher stream quality if I wanted to. And that's something you you probably couldn't do before if you have a really low end PC. This uses a lot less, and I don't want you guys to just take my word for it. I want you guys to go to the OBS website. I want you guys to download multi-platform version. I want you guys to try it for yourself and see if you get a performance increase. This is what I'm asking you guys to do because I recently learned about multi-platform, and I'm using it for my streams, and now I'm able to stream more frequently because of this. And I know that my channel has a lot of success with OBS-related videos, so that's why I wanted to get this out there. This is for you guys. I'm not trying to, you know make you guys use OBS more or something like that. I want you guys to have the best streams possible because I love live streaming to Twitch and I love watching live streams and I want to see you guys have the best live streams you can have. So please try out OBS multi-platform and when you do and when you look at it when you play around with it let me, let me know. Come back to the video, write a comment, leave me a message, tell me if you liked it, tell me this helps you. And yeah so uh, this pretty much is the whole video. Um, if this helps you at all and you find success with this, like I said a second ago, uh, leave me a comment, tell me about it, like the video, favorite, share it, whatever. Try to get the word out there, though. I want more people to experiment with this, and I want um, more people to use the uh, multi-platform version because, you know, hell, if uh, more people start using it, it might get more updates more quicker, and we might be able to get this version as the main version and get a stable version for Windows. Oh, and this is probably something I haven't mentioned. Um, because this is... Um, not a stable release. It's not the full version yet. It can be kind of buggy. So keep that in mind. This version is buggy and you might experience a crash and stuff like that. But more or less in my experience with it, it's more or less stable. But there are some bugs in it and deal, and you have just kind of have to bear with it because it's still getting updated. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything. Um, thank you guys for watching the video a lot. It means, it means a lot to me. Um, and yeah, I've been Tigazil and I'm signing off.